independence. Where all ECLs in Tanzania uh, we are bound to be used. And uh, this is after declaration of Mwalimu um, Julius Nyerere that we need to use Kiswahili as a unifying language and then th these ECLs will not be used because they will be affecting uh, the issues of tribalism. And therefore from there something or ideology or some issue, e e e ideology was planted inside or in the minds of Tanzania that we have to use Kiswahili whenever you meet somebody uh, outside or from that is from not uh, from no, from who is not from your ethnic background. And it then this borrowing, the direction of borrowing is commonly a symmetry as I said that is not equivalent. And the Kiswahili go to allow and did not allow to Kiswahili. I didn't find any allow word in Kiswahili, but with Rangi, Kiswahili, um, Alawa and Rangi, there are inter influence. Some words are found in Alawa, and uh, some words are found in Rangi, but uh, good enough, there is grammatical borrowing of Alawa to Rangi. And uh, I didn't uh, concentrate on that because I'm doing a lexical borrowing, but the, one of the informants from Rangi uh, give me some examples of five uh, situations where there is the impact of Kushitic imp uh, grammar in the, in the grammar of Rangi. And this is those members who are working with SEAL International who are doing translation of Bible. And therefore, through this contact between Alagwa and Kiswahili, several words or massive Kiswahili words entered into the language with two reasons, that is the need and the prestige. And the need led to the borrowing of non-core word or basic or core word. And also there is prestige, which led to borrowing of core and uh, these terms are not new to us. And uh, what uh, prestige borrowing led is to supplant some of the native words, but still some of the native words coexisted with the borrowed words. Uh, but in other cases, these words were supplanted, the Kiswahili word, like the Alawa don't have a word killer for killer. In Iraq, we have umu for killer, every or each but they don't have they cannot remember which how can they call killer in their language for those who i interviewed i said can you tell the the alagua word for killer they say no we don't have but you see we have io as mama but they are not using io mama kiswahili replaced the io they have tata for baba and they are no longer using Tata, they are using Baba, but they have, I don't know what is happening, they have the word Babu for Babu, grandfather, but now that replaced it by Babu. No, Baba, Baba is for grandfather, Baba is for grandfather, but now that is replaced by Babu, but they have Tata, for Baba, mm -hmm. and then now Tata uh, was replaced by Baba. Now you can see, for Bibi, they have a language word, Mama, for grandmother, but that was replaced by Bibi. I don't know why mother is, why grandmother is Mama, and the grandfather is Baba, while fa father is Tata, and the mother is Iyo. Therefore, that needs some kind of further investigation. And the loan word may conform to the structural system of recipient language that is Alagua. Indeed. Um, Alagua is a West Reef, Southern Cushitic language, Afro-Asiatic, that is according to, I just put Kisling, but more readings from uh, Mouse also pointed that. But according to Lot, 
2009, approximately there are 52 speakers of this language, but the, the number is still decreasing because of the development of bilingualism. Most of these people now, uh, youngsters are bilingual, or they are, and the other, let's say 20 minors years, are becoming monolingual in Kiswahili. Most of them speak Kiswahili, they cannot speak um, the Alagua. But the language is spoken in many parts of the Kondoa and some part of Manyara, particularly Hanang and Babati. Um, Alagua live in a contact zone. This is according to Kisling, Mouse, Mouse, and Nose 2018. But it is in contact with Rangi, Nyaturu, Kiswahili, those are Bantu language. In the village of Soga Soga, the language is in contact with Sandawe, Hoisan, but in the Sambalang and some part of Syrup and the Simbai, the language is in contact with uh, Barbaic Nilotic group. But also there are Iraq in some villages, and the Goroa too are in contact with this language. But there is no village, uh, village where you can find direct contact between this Alagua with Burundi, their uh, close relative compared to other uh, Southern Kushiti group. Now, I just wanted to see the Alagua consonant phoneme inventory, and in this, I the source of this is from mouse to. 2016, but I do some kind of modification. Uh, I put some kind of dash there, which I will later come up to talk in my implication of borrowing in Alawa or Kiswahili borrowing, those dash. But also you can see those are consonant, alphabet, and vowel, but there are the old one and in the recent version with some inclusion of some sounds. I can also later see, say that. Uh, what I'm saying there, you see the ha sound is like replacing by KH from Kiswahili influence. Hua is replaced by that Hua from Kiswahili in word like Sheche and etc. Writing use these two Kiswahili. And this influence is also found in Burunge. They are now using the Kiswahili. But worse enough, you can also find the, the use of those uh, foreign alphabet for those native words, not for the borrowed words. And this is what I see. I, when I asked some of my informants to write, but particularly bilingual, because those who are monolingual cannot write because they don't have literacy on how to write the alphabets. But I find uh, most of the informants who can write, they are writing uh, KH instead of HA. That is one of the influence that I can say later. Uh, methodology to 520 what uh, we are collected, and this were also some of the words were collected from mouse 2016, and the other were co collected from the field work that was conducted between April and May. Uh, I used the 15 informants, uh, ranging between 20 to 70, in Kwadinu and the Humai village. I used elicitation guide and loan forms, and the meaning were then compared with the Kiswahili. Uh, meanings. Findings. Uh, the finding reveals that a loan words from Kiswahili, there are Kiswahili loan words and there are so many compared to other languages that are in contact with. Uh, other languages that contributed to Alagwa are Barbaic with very few words uh, because they can sometimes not recall until I go through because I was not working with the contact between um, Bantu, non-Bantu, then I focused on Bantu, particularly Kiswahili. And some of the words like Gamboda and this and Gitfoya, I collected this from the book by mouse to 2016. But also 
most of the place names for these people are from uh, Barbaik, but also personal names. They are, some personal names are from uh, Barbaik due to contact. A few words from Rangi, uh, Chunchu, Punyo, Monjo. I also gathered this from Mouse 2016. But since they are in contact with Sandawe, I didn't come across with any weight because maybe I didn't pay much attention to see the impact of this. But with Burunge, I have something like uh, uh, some, some influence of sounds like uh, chatter, chatter. It is like leaks from Sandawe entering to Burunge because of that intensive contact with that. But I didn't find any weight. Um, and this cannot mean that there is no influence of Sandawe, but because it was not my part. And uh, therefore, they are also borrowing from Alagua and Burunge. But, but although it cannot be noticed, I found a word is zero. They are using 100. Mm -hmm. Alago who are in contact with, uh, with Iraq, I borrow this word zero because they are not using. They don't have any native word for uh, 100 or southern. They have already lost it. They are using mibi, miberi, mip. So I think because of complexity of miberi, mip, these people borrow this word as Iru, 100 from Iraq. Because when I asked them to count, when it, they reach to 100, they say zero. I asked, is this yours? No, this is not ours. We hear from Iraq, and then we are using it. You see, that is one of the areas that I see. However, Kiswahili loan are numerous in Alagua than any other language. And the Alagua uses different adaptation mechanism. And in this presentation, I will focus on morphological, <coughs> phonological, and what is called the uh, direct phonological diffusion. And this borrowing also resulted to introduction of foreign sounds and the alphabets, and also replacement of native alphabets. And that is what I can say. Um, With zero derivation, some of the Kiswahili words were adapted without altering their forms or their sounds. And this is very common. And this tendency is now growing as days goes because of this impact of bilingualism. Most of the Alawa can speak Kiswahili, therefore they don't see like nativizing the Kiswahili words that are entering into their language. And uh, most of the words uh, from Kiswahili are pronounced as uh, they are, but only very few. You can just hear in, uh, in the tongues of the old members of the community that they are trying to nativize some of the sounds that are not common to their language. But to most bilingual, you can hear that they are pronouncing words as they are. Um, but also there are issue of substitution of consonant with consonant and uh, some substitution were also found with vowels. You see there is the voicing of voice D stops and the fricatives. You see, but when I'm saying the voicing of z to sa or z or the to sa ba to pa. In those words, zawadi as sawadi, mzungu as mujungu. That is not so much like vita as wita. And this is not what is happening to Goroa and Iraq. For the case of vita, uh, Goroa and Iraq, they say vita. They use the... Uh, voiceless fricative, as in have a, in the Mreta work. And uh, for Dambi, they are using Sambi, that is sin, Barabara, Palapala, or Palapala. Now this re substitution can be rarely here 
in the um, uh, speech or conversation with the bilingual, but to the old people who are not so much bilingual or who are monolingual only in Alawa. But there are cases, I said V to U and Z to Oza or to Ja are used by old members, but uh, bilingual maintain sometimes the Va, Oza or the of Kiswahili. And that is the implication of borrowing due to the contact that because these youngsters are conversant and fluent in Kiswahili, therefore they cannot say, for instance, when say, uh, please take this, or Chukwahi Sawadi, you can hear rare that, but to the old member it is common. And there is the case of a voicing of voiceless stops and the alveolar. I don't know what is happening with hospitali. They are saying sibitari, sibitari. Do you see P to B? And with soxi, they are saying sogisi, katuga. And if you compare, I was trying to compare the, uh, the work by mouse and koro in ira and with have to see. But I see there is a big division between Alagua and these two languages in case of a substitution or adapting or nativization. With the blanketi, they are saying burungeti, katug. But again, there is the cases of alveolarization in which the sound th, the sound th, 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 change to sa. But also, this is mostly for old members who are monolingual. Uh, for the case of bilingual, they are using the same sound, but they are sometimes not so much consistent using the old, the, the nativized or the Kiswahili. They are mixing. And therefore, in instead of saying hadithi, it is hadi hadisi. And this is also common. Selasini, it is selasini or salasini. Shule, sule, but shule is now common than sule. Shule is common than sule. Fundisha, fundisha shim, or fundisha sim. Fundisha sim is not common, but fundisha sim is common, or fundisha shim. Therefore, there is like, you see, sha to sa only produce also by bilingual, tend to maintain or produce. But if you can see now, there is the, the and the tha merging to s in this language, or realized by sounds. There are also the issue of lateralization. I don't see if this is really the, I don't know if it is the effect of contact or it is, uh, you can see Mali is Mari, something that is happening to Korea and the Rangi. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, Seli, they say R, the in interchange. Bakuli is Bakuri, Filimbi, Firimbi, Hoteli, Hoteri. Uh, but also trialization of lateral l to r, r to l. You see, a karanga is kalanga, and a hereni is either dropping h initial and say eleni, rula, it is lura, lura, but it is like a metathesis to this but they say rula. Another word is mjeledi. Mjeledi, they are saying msereti, or mushereti, and etc. Uh, substitution of vowels, this is also common. The u change to u, e to e, as in word gauni, gauni, barua, baru, barua. But you see, they are not dropping the u but they are maintaining and putting the glide. Instead of, in Iraq we say barua, barua. But they are saying barua. And not barua or gauni. They are saying gauni. In gauni they say gauni and not gauni. And there is aina. 
I had a aina and the aina. Aina and the aina means that they are putting uh, in oh, what happened? Yeah. Okay. Another one is a substituted by e in a word circle. They are saying circle or beleshi, belishi and so many other words. A to E, like in Salah, they are saying Sarim, Sarim, Soma, Somim. A to U, Blanketi to Burungeti, and those are some. A to E, Tangaza from Tengesa. And U to A in a word is Sufuria to Safuria, and etc. I don't know how can I make it this can you see okay uh, insertion of consonant to break vowel cluster this is also seen as common for instance in a word Bazi they put uh, in, in between the long vowel uh, consonant l as Mbalasi or Mbalazi Karanga they say ka Karanga not Karanga to fry means Kalangiru and the cho they say choroni choroni and they are putting an at the end kitamba kitambara uh, there are vowel insertion generated a vowel directly after the initial or syllabic nasal for instance mkate they say mukate although uh, some of the uh, youngsters that I included in my study, they are saying, no, we are not saying mukate, we are saying mukate, uh, but because I found some of the old documents and from the old people, they are saying mukate, then there is mukate for old and mukate for the young. And then there is also mikate, sometimes they are just saying mikate to mean love, or they don't consider the plurality. Mchele, um, Muchere, Mzungu, Mujungu, some are maintaining Mzungu or Wazungu, they are using the Kiswahili. Uh, Pluromaka. A vowel insertion also to break the consonant branches is also common, as in Wedi, as Tempo, as Tempo, Captula, Capitura. Boxy, Bokisi. There are the issue of prothesis initial vowel insertion in a word inter as inter, but I don't know what is happening with a word gazeti. They are putting a nasal gazeti, but also there are insertion of her sound at the initial in a word uji and fuji. I will later say, like, these people have already uh, uh, dropped the glottal initials. Therefore, instead, they are replacing them with H sound. But also, they have dropped the glottal uh, at the end, and then they are using uh, this H sound because you cannot see its insertion in, the, in between or within the word root. You can find either insertion at the initial or at the final of the word. Also, insertion of final syllable after noun or verb root of etmo, CV for noun, you can say answer, ansiru, uh, um, uh, sala, saliru, soma, somiru. Uh, for verbs, there is the insertion of uh, what is called the as VC, VC, or VVC, only when lengthened, as in Ansim, Fulim, Somim, Andikim, Apungusim, and etc. All that are common. But you can say insertion of H sound in some word final or initial, as this word Hela, they say Hela, Hela, Keki, Kiti, Nondo and a halama. What I, in Iraq, I can say it is either alama with glotal or alama with pharyngeal fricative. Therefore, 
as seems to stand for glottal stop or pharyngeal while long do, do not have a like in Iraq and in Alagua. There are the cases of lengthening in a word week like wiki, gari gari, ansiru, cha niru, and etc. And the lengthening is common after the root of the loan verbs as in antikim, pungusim, and etc. There are also cases of deletion. You find uh, some cases of initial deletion or deletion of some sounds. Uh, in mashitaka, you can find they are saying sitaka or shitaka. Kaptula, you can find butula or there are the deletion of ndama to dama, mpelelezi to pereresiru. Other words are like kikapu, are saying kapu, and etc. Val deletion is also found in a word kibiriti, kirbiti, matofali, matfari, pilipili, pirpiri, and etc. There are a lot of such kind of deletion. Uh, let's see now morphological adaptation, and in this area I will talk to issues of um, morphemes that we are attached to nouns and to verbs. Uh, in Alagua loan, nouns are assigned gender and the number as major property of noun in southern Cushitic languages. Gender is not predictable as also I, uh, I didn't put the reference for this. Uh, this is also said by Mouse and the Oro and the uh, Harvey and the Mbreta. But semantic of some word help to recognize the gender of some loan words. Semantic. Uh, by looking on the meaning, for instance, for this particular group, a policy to them is a man and not a woman. Dakitari, Mualimu, Nesi is a woman. Ayaya, Shangazi, aunt. Therefore, from uh, just uh, looking the meaning of this particular word, you can predict the gender and the assigned. But also those words with the suffix like uh, that accepting more suffix or to, you can say mo is masculine and taking to as muzungi to au mujungu mo. You can say these are mujungu mo is um, masculine and mujungi to is a feminine. But generally, gender of the borrowed nouns can uh, be identified from verb agreement. This is also said, uh, I quote mouse to 2016. Therefore, the use of agreement suffixes was used to identify the gender of the borrowed nouns. Otherwise, you cannot, if you are not the native speaker, to tell whether this is a masculine or this is a feminine or this is a neuter. And uh, as I go through those words borrowed from Kiswahili, most of the nouns take the feminine than masculine, and uh, only those which can take plural as neuter, <coughs> and this is what also seen in the work by Mouse, 2016. Therefore, through the intuition of the speakers, we were able to uh, put those nouns into the construction so that we can see the gender of that particular noun through those affixes. Uh, but also, I think I, yeah. Number marking of loans in noun. Uh, loans words or noun are assigned in native number morpheme. And mostly I just use these three, u or u, the long one or the short, or era, or i or the glide. Uh, you can see there is uh, for chumba, they say chumba, chumbabu. Chumbabu. Uh, what we, I know in Iraq, we are using do, chumbadu, dukadu, chupadu, and etc. But what is happening in this language is the reduplication, if not assimilation. Reduplication, you see, chumbabu, dukaku, because of the last word. Then chupapu, kanzu is kancho, but the plural is kanchechu, and the shati, shatatu, and etc. 
but not always are going into this direction. But also, kikapu is kapu, but kapera, kilabu kilabera, basikeli basikerai, burungeti burungetai. And etc. you see that the adoption goes through the native morpheme that pluralize the words. Um, now for verbs, Alagua have CVC that is closed the syllable root, which can be followed by one or a combination of VC shape. Uh, you see Kiswahili verbs are borrowed in infinitive form and emerge with native derivation suffixes. Uh, what they do for those verbs that I, uh, I analyzed in this, I see the insertion of CCV. No, VVC, that is most of Sali, Sarim, Batiza, Batisim, Soma, Somim, Punguza, Pungusim. But also, I had words from, like Andy Kim from Maus, 2016, Fundishim, or Fundishashim. They are also trying to reduplicate the uh, imperfective uh, suffix in order to accommodate those words. But in this area, there is no the issue of all these speakers, no bilingualism. They are falling in the same, uh, on, or only in the sounds. For instance, the uh, bilingual are saying fundi shashim, but not fundi sasim as the old member. And therefore, this is what is happening in Alawa to put the native, the borrowed verbs into their no native way, they have to add this. But I come across with, or with only this case of verb. And this doesn't mean that they have only this suffix for uh, making verbs or deriving verbs. There are other suffixes discussed uh, broadly by Mouse 2016. But in my data, I only found that cases. But because the data, uh, for verbs are very few compared to noun. There are so many nouns borrowed to, but few verbs. And in those I found they have this uh, case of im or v, v, c, o, v, c. Now let's go to implication of bilingualism in the sound and the orthography. Uh, I will quote this from mouth 2016 that these sounds Ja, Nya, and Cha enter the Southern Cushitic or Cushite languages in early contact, although it, it was debatable when I read the document that some are saying they are, they are originally a Southern Cushitic, but uh, what I get is that they enter uh, in the very early contact. Uh, but in recent borrowing, you see sound Sha, Za, and Va are now entering into the language. This is the big influence of bilingualism. When these people are speaking, are using their language in conversation, you cannot hear sa instead of shule, instead of fundisha, and instead of shitaka, you can just hear shitaka, shule, and etc. And I also found this in many written documents, they are using sha instead of sa for the borrowed word that have this sound. Again with za, I also found all word with za and not a sa. With va, we intend to get word is va to be wa as in wita or wirasi to mean potatoes, but also you can find v. Uh, also, this led to the seas or decline use of pharyngeals and glotal. Uh, borrowed words don't take or assimilate it to pharyngeals or gloto, you cannot find such cases, but only those words associate uh, uh, the direct borrowing from Arabic. You can find this like in a word, adana. They are using them because they are the words that are used in the mosque, and most of these are Islamic, not Christian, and therefore they are taking those words directly you can find instead of in a word Qurani, they are saying Qurani, 
and not Qurani. Qurani and the Adana and the Seta. You can only hear that. But in other cases of borrowing from Kiswahili, you cannot hear all pharyngeals or glotal. They are dropped in. And the, therefore, I will later say what then I claim to. In the orthography, there are these new alphabets entering the language, like Kha in a word Sheikh, uh, in a word like Tha, Za, Va, Sha, Ga, and etc. New alphabet replacing this one. Uh, the, and this is also in Burungi. The Burungi are no longer using this sound, this one. They are using instead KH in the alphabet, in their writing. Why they are saying this is not understood by their people, and therefore instead they are using that. And this is, I think it is threatening the originality of the language like this sound. Uh, in many uh, seal work for Burungi, seal work for Alagua, they propose to use the, is the, those sounds, on the new one from Kiswahili, that is. And it was enough when you ask somebody to write like uh, a word like um, Echisimo. They are writing using the Kiswahili one and not the old one. Therefore, these words, the, this alphabet also replace or use, are used in the native word, not only in the borrowed words. And I have some examples. But if you come to the morphological influence of bilingualism in case of borrowing, uh, there is a shift to use plural marking morphemes, Kiswahili plural marking morphemes. In many ways, when you ask somebody to write a uh, plural nouns, for, for instance, these are a few cases, adui, they are saying maadui. Mkate, mikate, that is common. Kiongozi, they are rising viongozi. Instead of, I don't know how they can say mlinzi, they are saying walinzi. Vitambulisho, kitambulisho, vitambulisho. And in so many other cases, they are using Kiswahili uh, plural morphemes for some words. And this is what I say. Since there are those foreign sounds, then uh, the gap for uh, fricatives, voiced is going to be filled, uh, alveolar fricative, voiced and the, the palato, uh, voiceless. The gap that I showed in my first uh, phonetic inventory, because this is what the people are saying. Most of the, the speakers are using V instead of W. They are using um, za instead of sa that we expect it to be used as a nativization strategy, uh, or sa instead of sha, then there is a sha. And in many writing, there is sha. If that is the case, then it is. Uh, it is informative to, to put them into the inventory, like filling the gaps that exist in the phonetic inventory of the language. And therefore, Alagua incorporates Kiswahili loanway through zero derivation, morphological, and phonological adaptation. And here I can say that. It is like now the current borrowing as a result of bilingualism making the assimilation theory as sometimes I can say weak because there is this sort of direct uh, uh, adaptation or taking of borrowed words as they are pronounced in their etmo. And this is common, for instance, when I, I, my, I go to the market, I cannot say, please, can you give me vocha? Mm. I can't. I have to say vocha. Okay? I cannot say sambi instead of zambi. And this is what happening to people of my age or speakers of my age all over in the Alagua community. And uncommonly, some remote sounds and the consonant cluster have been tolerated. Yeah, there is some kind of tolerance of 
the foreign clusters. Uh, not always that clusters are uh, broken down by either consonant, by consonant insertion or vowel insertion. There are cases where the uh, clusters are maintained and also uh, bilingualism or resulted to introduce new sounds and the graphemes in Alagua, hence filling phonological gap in Alagua phoneme inventory and the invasion of new alphabet. Thank you, and this is the end of the presentation. Well, we have a few uh, minutes for questions, so uh, let's open up the room for uh, questions or comments. Thank you. It's, uh very interesting, and I, I, I agree that uh, things are changing now due to the Israeli uh, influence in terms of phone inventory. Um, a few remarks. I find the im for verbs very interesting because in uh, in Iraqu, probably also in Gorla, we would use uh, causative uh, and then the form us. Yeah, and, course, yeah. Uh, and the im is more like a, like a progressive kind yeah. of suffix. Progressive, but some of the members are saying this is not the basic, it's not an infinitive, this is for future. For future, yeah, yes. Yeah, future for marking, future. Yeah. yeah. And they are proposing to use ru. But when I read, I find Yeah, it but the uh, iru is the, the infinitive, the nominal form of yeah. the same suffix. Yeah. It's the same thing, the iru and the im. Mm. Yeah. So, I wonder what is, why that is such an attractive derivational suffix to to make uh, to make it an acceptable verb in in, in um, A remark: the dama mm. is a Cushitic borrowing in Swahili. Okay. Yeah, so that. Yeah, direction. Yeah, the direction. Okay. But one of the very few, but it's an old, very old Kushitic borrowing. So. And uh, what is puzzling me as well is the, the syllable, the, the, the vowels to break up uh, consonant clusters. Yes. Uh, these I find interesting too, but no, but that you really get uh, uh, Baruwa instead of Barwa. They are saying baru, Baruwa. Yeah. Baruwa. So I wonder. Aina. They are not saying Aina. A yeah. Aina. Yeah, for Aina. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but for hospital, for hospital. Sibitari. Sibitari. Because that is the, f the, the first adaptation was Sibitari. Yes, yeah, Sibitari. Yeah. So, but then they insert a vowel. Although, I mean, in. Alakwa, those constant clusters are no problem at all. Yeah. So it is to say Sipitali is not making it closer to to Swahili, but I don't know what it is. It is making it closer to kind of Swahili phonology, it, or it is as if Rangi. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that Rangi influence. Rangi influence. No, everyone's looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about that, actually. Um, yeah, thank you for a yeah, really interesting talk. I have uh, a question which is maybe impossible to answer. So, um, some of the examples that you had earlier on with this kind of looking at the differences between this, so essentially a, a language of pronunciation or adaptation to Swahili words, it struck me that in these parts of Tanzania, Maybe that's how everyone pronounces some of these Swahili words, or that is Swahili Jabara, like some kind of mainland yeah. Swahili yeah. characteristics. Anyway, so a contrast between like kind of standard Zanzibari Swahili, and then what you're showing from a Lagwa perhaps is I don't know, maybe artificial. Yeah. Anyway, right, um, and I don't know. Yeah, what you yeah, what you think about that or how much of a role you know, so are language speakers then take these Swahili words 
are they perhaps even being exposed to Swahili words that are already alagwaized or you know, so the r l, for example, lots of speakers of Swahili in this area would do the same thing. It's different from some of the other examples where you have. Okay, yeah, the case of r to l and the r l to r. Mm. Uh, I so I thought to be the influence maybe from Rangi. Well, if they are doing this, so and I, I didn't have time to see what the Rangi are doing in the same ways. Then I can come across with. But of course, in Iraq, the in stem of Baiskeli. I don't know if they are saying Baiskeli. No, we say man Baskeli or Paskeli. We don't have substitution of such kind. Therefore, this also needs further investigation to see who is influencing is this Alawa or within the mosque. They have such kind, but no. Do you have that in Gorba? The L -R -L -R? Yeah. But we have in, in Iraq, we have Firimbi. We are not saying yeah. Firimbi. That's true. Firimbi. Yeah. Occasionally, I mean, it's not a consistent thing. It is not consistent, but. Some words maintain, but some words change. I don't know. Yeah. I need some sort of further investigation of. But you find it. You you would you find it here a lot in, in the. Yeah, Alakna. there are a lot yeah. of. Yeah. Mm. And and would they correspond to Rangi or? Is it the Baisikari? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I can't remember the other. Okay. There was uh, Kalanga for Karanga. Uh, Mali for Ka Mali. Kala Mali. Kala Mali. Kala Mali. Mm. Mm. Kikarang, kika, ki, kikalang, kikalango, for from rang is kikarango. Kikalango, they are saying kikarango. Frying pan, frying pan. Yeah. But then, so in that example, the rangi is not a good example. Yeah. Rangi famously has la, like yeah. kilangi, so it's kilangi. So, well, that's a different from the. Black. 